Look, you all, we know that history is about to happen on our corner. We have an elder. Yep, we have an elder in the building. We have elders in the building. So we need us to value our lives and value each other's lives enough. We need you to take a step back for us. Come on. You can just take a step back for us. Capture this on social media. Go live on all your look, take a step, take a step back. White allies, we had this conversation yesterday. We need you on the perimeter. We need you on the perimeter. White allies, we need you on the perimeter. We had this conversation before. Thank you for supporting us. Everybody fan out, y'all. We appreciate it. So y'all are gonna be able to hear. But let's just fan out just a little bit. We gotta protect our health. Everybody take a step or two back. Take, a t take two steps back. We Daddy. appreciate you all. Thank you. Yep. One more step and get your phones out so you can record this. We need this to be recorded. Go live. Do Go this. We can't breathe. Hashtag we can't breathe. Hashtag we can't breathe. Hashtag, Hashtag we can't breathe. I'm going to say it again, white allies, we thank you for sharing this space with we'll us. But we need you to back up. This is a black space. We appreciate your support. You but back, we need you to be on the perimeters. Put your bodies on the perimeters. Thank you. Hello, hello. We want to make sure. We want to make sure this is heard. Once again, we thank you all for being out here. We thank you for the atmosphere that you all have already um, set. We feel the energy. We feel the prayers. We feel our ancestors. We thank you for that. We want to remain safe. Our two choices should not be COVID-19 or the MPD. So we need to take COVID-19 off the record right now by social distancing ourselves as best as possible. White allies, if you're out here, thank you. Thank you. We want you to align with us right now by having your body on the line and being on the perimeter, allowing our black elders the space so that they can be safe in this space. Amen. If you need a mask, let us know. We have plenty of them. All right, here we go. How far that far? Hope I don't mark y'all and y'all shot this. Mother Gardner. Woo! Eric Gardner's we mother. We have Eric Gardner's yeah. mother here as well. And we have Reverend Al Sharpton here as well. Before we get started, let's do this. I'm gonna say this again. We need you to. We need you to re, um, respect us enough, sisters. If if you in the crowd, mothers, I need you to help us out and mother this crowd. I need us to fan out as best as possible. White allies, if you're here, thank you for being here. But we need you on the perimeters. We want to be very clear. We're holding the black space right now. We need you on the perimeters. We appreciate that. We want to move in love. We want to move with love. We want to move with love. It will be peace in this place. I speak it to the atmosphere. Let's go. City Councilman Jenkins is here. We have. Spread out. Spread out. We appreciate it. We give honor to every elder that's in the building. There's so many that I have to mention. That's all pastors that's in the building, to leaders that's in the building, to black bodies that's in the building, and most of all, a moment of silence to our now ancestor, Mr. Floyd, give us a moment. Thank you. There's a national movement that's shifting from I can't breathe to we can't breathe. Hashtag that we can breathe a national movement right now is no longer about the eye. It's a collective movement. Thank you, Reverend Sharpton. <clears throat> Let me first thank the ministers and elected officials Amen. and the grassroots leaders 
that welcomed us here today. Yesterday we spoke with the brothers and cousins of Brother Floyd. And we said to them, thank you. We said to them that in 2014, Eric Garner was assaulted by police in New York, choked, put in a chokehold, and said, I can't breathe. And the officer would not let the chokehold go, and he died. They would not prosecute that officer. It took us five years to get him fired. Can't take five years. If they had prosecuted that officer, maybe Floyd would be alive today. Come on. Amen. Why do I say that at the scene of his death? It's because we're going to make sure that this prosecution goes down. Right. So we're not somewhere yes, five yes. years from now saying they should yes. have prosecuted Floyd. Yes. In the Floyd case. Now, in order to make an arrest, all you need, brother, please, we're here to do press. Don't block press, please. We're here to get a message out. Let's not argue between each other. In order to get an arrest, all you need is probable cause. Mm. If you see a crime and a criminal and there is no reason for the crime, an arrest is made. Then a grand jury decides if there's an indictment and then a judge and jury decides whether or not there's a conviction. Mm. You do not need anything more than you have now to arrest those four policemen. Yeah. There are probable cause right now. You have a deceased person. You have a tape showing how he was deceased. You have a tape showing the other three police did nothing to prevent it. Then they should tell these four police what they tell all of us in the hood. Mm -hmm. Tell it to the judge. Yeah. We come to stand with this family and stand with the community because this is a struggle that we've had all over this country. And let's not tell half the story. Hmm. Yes, the reason why you see the anger in Minneapolis is because this is not the first time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And this is not the first time you ignored the rights of people. Yep. Sometimes that Martin Luther King Jr. said that sometimes when you see riots, it's the unheard speaking. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are nonviolent, but we understand the outrage and the anger. We're all angry, but we use our anger a different way. But when I got here, someone said to me, are you going to address the violence? The violence I'm addressing is how a man could hold a man down yes, with a knee on his neck Come for on. nine minutes. Yeah. That's when Come the on. violence started. Yes, yes. Come on. The violence started on this corner when this man was choked to death begging for his life. Mm -hmm. So we must act in a way to get justice and to get fairness. Yes. We're not asking for a favor, we're asking for what is right. Mm -hmm. Come on. One of the things that's good is that we've seen blacks and whites together. And, and they respect the space of the black pain. And that's a good thing. We want a movement to show we're together. Yes. On this Saturday, we're going to call people all over the country to gather and be part of the We Can't Breathe movement all right. in different cities. Gwen Carr, the mother of Eric Garner, and I are going back to the scene where he was choked in New York on Saturday to link with those here uh, in Minneapolis and around the country. So we wanted to come here first and give our respect. We will be back for the memorial services and the funeral. The family has asked us to speak. They're going to do memorial services probably here and in Houston where he was 
uh, raised. He was born in North Carolina. We're going to be with them the whole way. Yeah. Attorney Ben Crump, where we have won cases together, is we stand with him. We stand with these grassroots ministers yes. that believe that God didn't call them to be served, but to be servants. Here we go. If you're not a servant, then you're not called by God. You're manipulating people. These preachers are servants, and they'll be in the streets. And we'll be back over and over again. But I didn't want to send word. I wanted to come and let you know we are with you until we get justice. Thank you. Thank you. Let me also say there are those that say to me, Reverend Al, we need peace, and we do. But there's a difference between peace and quiet. Come on. Some people just want quiet. The price for peace is justice. Don't just tell people to shut up and be quiet and keep suffering. Give them peace. Let them know the value on their life. Let them know the law works for them. And you won't have to quiet them down. They will be glad about it. We want justice. No justice and no peace. That's, right. That's what we've said. Yeah. Let me let Ms. Carr, the mother of Eric Garner, Come on. who this started with, I can't breathe. Give our hands. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Good afternoon, people. I come to stand in solidarity with the family and you all. As you know, this happened to me almost six years ago. And this is just opening up an old wound, pouring salt into it. They keep coming into, the, the police officers come into our neighborhoods. They, they brutalize. They terrorize. They murder our children. And we have done nothing. They don't find a weapon. They say they thought they, that they saw a weapon. They feared for their life. How did they fear for their life in this case? They had a young man in handcuffs. I didn't see any resistance. Why was their foot on his neck? And then they said they tried to resuscitate. How are you going to resuscitate a fatally injured person? This memory is so clear in my head. Years ago, the officers involved in my son's murder, it was lies after lies, cover-up after cover-up. I just commend this mayor for acting so swiftly. Because in my case, it took five years, five years just to fire one officer. And it would not have happened if I wouldn't have kept pressing on after the federal government said that they wasn't going forward. I said, you may not go forward, but I am. And that's what you must do. Because this is not going to be an easy fight. I'm going to tell you right now. Everybody is with you now. But later on, it's going to be a lonely road. And only you can choose if you're going to keep on going or you're going to just lay back and say, oh, this is another news story. We cannot let this be another news story. No, no, no more. We all have to get out and stand together. And we don't have to do it violently. We can do it politically. Yes, we can. Voting is coming up. Don't sit around and say, my vote don't count. We put these politicians in, and we can take them out. Okay? But it's up to you. How do you stand on this? I do my part. A lot of things y'all don't see me. Y'all see me on TV sometimes, but a lot of times you don't. I'm up in Albany, my state capital, talking to the legislators. I don't believe in writing letters. I don't believe in phone calls. I believe in face-to-face. -face. I want them to see me when I ask for my demands. And I want your personal cell phone number. I don't want the office number. I want your personal number. So when you don't do what I ask you to do, or I can tell you, uh, are you, you want my vote? You better come and get it. Come on. Okay? And so I hope all of you do the same. And we're not going to forget this young man. No. We're not going to forget my son. No. But you know what? 
we must go forward because this young man, my son, they won't come back. But we must fight for others. My f must fight for your son, your nephew, your grandson. So let's stand together. Thank you. Hashtag we can't breathe. We can't breathe. Come on, we can't breathe. We can't breathe louder. We can't breathe louder. We can't breathe louder. We can't breathe louder. We can't breathe everywhere. We can't breathe. Yeah. We can't breathe. Yeah. We can't breathe. Yeah. We can't breathe. All right, Miss Carr and I are going down to the Capitol to tell some of the elected officials that we're here to support the immediate arrest of these four officers, and we'll be back next week with the Mabar service. Pastor Me, thank you so much. We will walk back over to church with y'all. We love y'all. Right Stay here. straight. Stay Senator. Vice President of the Minneapolis City Council right here. All right. Unless you sister. Come on, let's let, let some of the electors that, that stood up to be with us today say something. Come yeah. on. I'm here with y'all today to grieve the loss of George Floyd, to say that we stand with this family seeking justice and fairness in this situation. My name is Andrea Jenkins. I'm the vice president of the Minneapolis City Council. This is my corner. This is our corner. We are not letting this corner go for, to the police. We're not letting this corner go to all of the anarchists that are here that want to destroy our community. We are not letting this corner go to anybody. This is our streets. We're going to fight for our streets, and we're going to fight for justice for George. My name is Jeff Hayden, and I'm the state senator in this district. And Andrea and I have been working on this corner for well over 25 years. I will agree with her. We are not going to let this corner go. And I will tell you that as we move forward and we go into special session, you will not get the vote of the African-American community and the people of color community until we get real reform at the state capitol, and that means dealing with the Minneapolis Police Department, making sure, right, that we have the right officers there and that we recruit, and every single dollar that we spend with the police, we should spend three in the community, and that's yeah. what we're gonna push for. I won't be long, I wanna give it to Pastor Farrar, who's been on this corner for 38 years. Yes. Well, one thing for sure, and I'm very, very happy to see, uh, we all here, in unity, talking about moving forward. And you know, at one point, and I've been here 38 years, I remember uh, not too long ago, I was, I was in the same situation and I came within an inch of my life. They choked me and they beat me. My brain was swollen up and I didn't have the kind of uh, backing we have. That was when Stenvig was mm -hmm. mayor. Y'all remember Stenvig? Stenvig. Oh, yeah. But I want you to know that uh, I believe we're moving forward. Yes. And we're not just going to react to what's going on, but we're going to act. I believe they're here, all these leaders are here today, ministers and all, because we have a plan. Yes. And if we follow this plan, we're going to be okay. Yes. I said, we're going to be okay. Yes. And we're going to see those officers not only charged, but in jail. Yes. Amen. That's what I really want to see. And I want to just thank everybody. Uh, Reverend Shopton, uh, I really appreciate him. And, and my, my mother here, uh, 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 Mother Gardner, I really appreciate you and being here to represent your son. You haven't quit. And it's an inspiration for all of us to keep going and keep pushing and to keep pressing. So I look forward to seeing some of you one of these Sunday mornings at my services, <laughs> and you will be blessed. God bless you. Here's the man of God here, Bishop Howe. We are not asking for the ballot. We are demanding the ballot. We are not asking for peace. We're demanding peace. We're not asking for justice. We demand justice. To our county attorney, Mike Freeman, arrest these four men and charge them with murder. Lock them up! 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 So you heard it here first? You heard it here first? The beginning of a national movement called We Can't Breathe! 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 
that free. Hashtag that. Make that a movement. Watch for the next steps. If you have um, questions, you can email we.can'tbreathe at gmail.com. Again, we.can'tbreathe at gmail.com. Leave your information. This is a collective movement. It's not about the I, but it's about the we. Because why? We can't breathe. The day gonna come when I won't watch no more.